Okay, so here we are with a little bit of a bonus gem, you could say. At least this amuses me quite a bit. Um, so here what you're seeing is, well, essentially Pong, but it's, it's a self-contained animation. So I built this animation just work based on using various uh, variables within Isadora. And what I'll do now is I'll take you through and show you those different variables. So, uh, oh, of course you can't see me here. Uh, not that that's vital, but I'm just gonna go in and copy and paste just so I can show you what I'm doing here. Simply just copying the video in Watcher and the stage to add it to this new scene. And there I am. So, let's take a look at what is actually at play here. So we've got a few different things happening. Uh, ultimately, see this one right here? It's not being used, so I'll just take that away. And we can look at our various aspects. So you might recognize some of these uh, little actors here from before. We've got the shapes, of course, three shapes uh, that are set up. And surprise, surprise, there are three shapes on screen. Oh, sorry, my mistake. There's four shapes here. I've got a fourth, and there are four shapes on screen there. So two of them are almost identical, and that's the little paddles. And you can see if I just turn the bypass on, one of my paddles disappears. Of course, none of the other animation changes, because this is simply just sending data to the program, not actually playing Pong. So, this one here and this one here control my paddles. Paddle gone here, paddle is back. Paddle gone here, paddle is back. And these are simply the shapes I've used. I've used a wave generator, as we did before, just to make it go up and down, and by choosing the exact positions, I've contained it to 32 and negative 32 because I've just figured out by trial and error and just moving this little dial across here, if I were to say show you in the horizontal position, that when I get past this level, it's no longer on the screen. And it doesn't work with the same idea of having Pong. So, if I want Pong to happen, I need certain elements to contain it. Now, I've also got this shape over here. I'll turn it off and on so you can see it. Off and on. And this is just a simple static line that I put on. They have a little divider. Finally, actually one of the more complicated things I've had to do to build this effect is to use a wave generator. In this case, I'm using a sine wave. And uh, I just had to adjust the frequency to line up here, again, through trial and error. And I actually linked it up with the same percentage value going out to the horizontal position here and the vertical position. And the horizontal position, likewise, is at negative 46 to 46, which I did down on the other shapes here. Uh, so here you can see it, negative 32 to 32 for vertical. And this one is going vertical, negative 32 to 32 for horizontal. I've adjusted to uh, negative 46 because I also found that going horizontally, if I went all the way off the screen, then it goes right through the paddle. Even if you're watching here, you can see that it's not a perfect uh, little design there because it doesn't hit the paddle and just bounce right off. But those are minor adjustments that you can make uh, through a little bit more detailed design. So this is one way that you can build a self-contained repetitive design uh, in the program. So, hopefully that gives you a general idea of building designs.